Hey guys, how's everyone doing out there? It's Lee here and again, and I'm live once again from 42 Gear Street. I'm here with Guillaume from Blue Cat Audio, and today we're taking a look at the Axiom, which is a sort of an amp modeling multi-effect software package. Yep. So tell us a little bit about what this, what the Axiom does, what the package does, and what people can expect from it. So the idea is to give you all the tools you need to create your own guitar tone. Okay. Um, so from replacing the pickups on your guitar, if you mm -hmm. want, um, until uh, changing the, the way it sounds in your headphones and all through all the way through the effects like uh, chorus flanger, phaser, mm. uh, distortion pedals and uh, also amp simulation. Cool. So quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of features then. Yep. Okay, cool. So obviously this thing does quite a lot, so we'll get through what we can in this session. I'm using this really cool Stanford Crossroads fully hollow guitar with P90s. So this should be pretty fun when it comes to using the pickup the pickup sort of replacer, and I've got another guitar on standby as well. So, where do you reckon we should start? Do you think we should start with some pickup tones or some basic sort of amp tones? What oh, would you... Maybe let's play a little bit with the clean tones. Yep, let's start with some clean tones then. So what have we got dialed in at the moment? It's uh, it's a custom amp, uh, okay. um, a clean clean tone, which is um, a bit similar to what you get with a uh, Fender amps. Okay, But cool. it's a completely custom uh, yeah. amp here. Cool. Let's get some tones then. Sounds great. Let's maybe add some crunch to it. Yes. So is that a different amp we're going to now, or is that the same amp, but just with a bit of... Bit just of changing the amp for cool. another one. Okay. Let's go for it then. <laughs> Sounds great, I really like that. Um, so how far does this this thing go in terms of different amp models? How many different amps are, are built into the Axiom? There's an infinite number of amps in there, actually. Um, okay. So you have like a few hundreds of presets, right? Uh, but then you can build your own amp simulation. Okay. Um, so you can either uh, go into uh, the uh, amp editor, which lets you uh, dial in all the parameters wow. you need to change the amp. Like in every <laughs> single detail is available there. <laughs> Um, or there's a, an easier way now, um, which is called Tone Maps. And so you, you can load many existing presets in there, so like okay. existing amps. Yeah. And then you can uh, navigate in the map right. uh, through the amps and create your own tone out of them um, just by cool. morphing between the amps. So maybe wow. let's try <laughs> to load a crunch map. We're in crunch tone now. Um, like. So that pretty much means if someone wants wants to do that they could use a specific amp as like a like a template and then they could say oh, i want like a marshall style amp but i want it to be a bit more like this as well and they can find some sort of middle ground then exactly yes yes right okay well and, and so you, you don't have to know anything about the amps and the way they are uh, configured just yeah. move around and and try to find the the, the sweet spot okay that well, works for you so maybe really cool. just give it a try and, and yeah. tell me when you're happy with the sound cool So what what did we do there? What did we sort of set it between? So it was. Um, let, let's zoom in to see how where we were. Okay. So we were closer to a, a Marshall type type of okay. amp, 
uh, but a bit in the uh, in the uh, Twangi territory, like right. the Fender stuff. So. Oh, cool! But well, closer well, to the Marshall style, which is funny because that's pretty much the, the sort of sound that I like. Is like a Fender style amp with I usually use like a mid boost sort of pedal in the middle, which sort of takes that sort of six L six Fender thing and just pushes it a little bit more Marshally. So that's yeah, that's fun. Funny. I, and I recognised that tone straight away as, oh, that's the tone that I really enjoy playing with. Okay, so yeah, you see, it took like a few seconds to, to dial your yeah, sound. Yeah, that, that literally took 10 seconds. <laughs> you, did, you didn't even really need to tweak that. As soon as you hit that point, something just clicked. And you think, oh, that, that's it. That's what I want. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> nice. So what else does it do then? So I know there's a bunch of effects built in. So yes. what, have, what have we got there when um, we've got the... We, we have a... All the classics. You're right, yeah. Uh, but there's another one which I like to show you, which is a called Let Replies. It's a it's a delay plugin. Okay. That can add the effects into the delay. Uh, here you go, and you can create all sorts of crazy tones, uh, even some some reverbs. Let, let's load one to see. It looks uh, really in depth. It looks like there's a lot of stuff going on. Is it quite easy to use for someone who who perhaps isn't great with software? Oh, sure, I mean, you have lots of presets, so yeah. um, you can go in depth if you want, but to get started, just load presets. Okay, that's and cool. You have several sections. Uh, it's the same for all the, the software I have. Um, there are several sections everywhere, and for each module, you can load presets there. Right, so okay, you can, you can either load global presets, which have all the uh, tones ready for you, yeah. or then you can uh, uh, combine the presets of different sections. Yeah, cool. Uh, and then you can get into the details. Uh, yeah, oh, all right, that's cool. So there, so anyone who isn't that sort of comfortable with software. Obviously, this is not that hard to use. Guillaume has just said that, you, that, you know, you can start with one of the hundreds of presets and then as you get more confident and more used to it, you can sort of dig in into some of the deeper editing and have a bit of fun with that as well. So I've added a, a, an FX reverb in there. Uh, so okay. it's going to follow what you play. So if you wow. play a, a, a small lead thing, uh, well... What it does, it, it spreads, uh, it's, wow. it's a delay, so it spreads what you're playing yeah. and then adds some effects to it. So it, cool. it creates a texture behind that follows the harmonies. Yeah, so if like you that. play like arpeggios, it's going to create kind of chords behind that follows okay. what you're playing. So if you're picking something like... Uh, can the volume up helps? That sounds really cool. Um, there are other types of uh, reverbs in there that you can create with effects. Like uh, I like this one. The uh, reverb tail is is ramping up. Okay. Uh, try it. You. Yeah. That's really cool. You can hear it sort of, especially if you use that, like at the end of a phrase, that's quite a cool transitional sort of effect, isn't it? Like you could have that in a gap where it sort of just swirls up in the middle. Really cool. Uh -huh. Or you can create some uh, more classical uh, effects like uh, tape delays. Okay. Uh, let's try uh, this one. <laughs> As you can hear, yeah. you have this kind of fluttery thing. So it's created with a, a chorus effect inside the feedback loop. Right, okay. So, uh, again, you can, you can customize every single detail, but you can just also load the preset like that and, and, and play with it. That's really cool because I think it, it sort of 
doesn't put limits on the software then. You can use the presets to dial in all these great tones, but then if you want, you can sort of just do whatever whatever else you want with it as well. You yeah. can make your own delays, make your own reverbs. That's really cool. It's a great idea as well because I think a lot of people with software maybe feel a bit limited because it, you're just sort of working with the confines of what's there. But what you've sort of put in place is here's the software, but you can sort of do what you want with it, really. Yeah, is... and if you cannot find the effects you want in there, uh, you can also load third-party VSTs in there. That's so really if there's a, a VST you like with a very specific effect, yeah. you can just load it into Axiom and, and That's really work cool. with it. That's a really cool idea. It's just completely open. I'm guessing it probably has most things built in already, though. I'm guessing you've sort of covered most of the bases. Yeah. There's probably mo not yeah. much people would need to import anyway. Yeah, but anyway. still, there's always one thing that you like, or, yeah, or you're used yeah. to it, so you want to load it. Uh, yeah. That's a really good idea because I know, like, for me, I've got, like, compressor plugins that I use all the time. Yeah, so if you're used to the tool, even, I mean, even if you can create it with, uh, with Axiom or any mm. effect in there, uh, well, uh, use the tools that you're used to. Yeah. Brilliant. So has it got all, like, different modulation effects and stuff too? Oh, uh, yes. There's what have a, we got there? What, what do you want here? Uh, what have you got? Uh, I'm guessing most of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let, let's check the, the presets and, and what you can do with I them. love Leslie-style speakers. Has it got anything sort of like a rotary speaker? Um, there's a phaser that you can customize. Um, okay. It's not really watery, but maybe try this one and, and see how it goes. Yeah, that sort of fills the gap there, doesn't it? Oh, you have some more classical, uh, like some typical chorus. If you're more, really nice. If you're more into uh, tremolo, then... Ah. Nice. Yeah, I like tremolo. It's a great fun effect. Uh, yeah, well, there are many things in there. Um, there's also a wah. So this one is more okay. a, a noto wah here <laughs> with, with a funky style. <laughs> Brilliant, that was a fun. <laughs> uh, I, sure I love auto watch. <laughs> if you want to get back to the uh, modulation stuff, this one is more of a vibrato thing. Okay. So. If I was sort of building my own Leslie, I'd probably use a combination of that and the phaser to sort of really yeah. dial that in. But it's cool, though, because you can. You could sort of do whatever you want. So even if it's not listed in the presets, you can pretty much create it. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Brilliant. And they all sound great as well. Everything sort of sounds really cool. What's the the Lux vibe? That's sort of catching my attention there on the preset list. Which one? Uh, the Lux vibe, is that what it says from here? Uh, yeah. Oh, that one. I think, oh, yeah. I like that, it's quite subtle, but it's... Yeah, so th this one is, is actually funny because it's using a frequency shifter, which okay. is a, the type of effect you would use more in electronic music. Yeah. Uh, but, well, when used with subtlety, you can create a really uh, yeah. subtle and nice phasing effects. Yeah, that's really nice. It's a bit unusual, but... Uh, I like that you have that pedal view then as well. So, obviously, when you click the pedal, you can see it. And I guess for the people who are 
more traditionally inclined, that sort of visualization is a bit easier to work with because you can see it as a pedal and you can, oh, well, I'll twist that. It's a bit more, even though it's software, it sort of makes it feel that little bit more analog because the people who maybe aren't as used to going through menus and clicking buttons, they can see that and, and actually know, oh, okay, I'll just twist that knob and that, that will get me what I want. Yeah, and there are very few knobs in general uh, in, the, uh, in the pedal, so it's, yeah. it's easier to, to tweak. Yeah, cool. That sounds great. Okay, cool. So we've covered amps, we've covered a couple of effects. Uh, what else does this thing do? So you said pickup replacement. Yeah, let's, let's try it out. Yeah, um, so obviously I'm using a P90 guitar here. So this will be quite interesting to see what it can do to this guitar. And then I've got another guitar to the side here that we'll pull in as well. So let's remove the frequency shifter and maybe get some crunchy tones. Yes, uh, let's get a nice, nice sort of warm crunch, I think. The one we had earlier, I think it's gonna work well. So here you go. Cool. So you got the P90, which is kind of a single, it's between the single core yeah. and, and, yeah. The, uh, and the humbucker. So uh, we'll, may, we may have to tweak it a, bit, a little bit. Uh, and then you can select if you want to create a, a single core sound or mm -hmm. a humbucker style sound. Okay. So whatever you want to start with. Uh, let's go single core first then. So okay. I'm on the bridge pickup. Is that what you want me? Yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> brings in the sort of the twang of the single coil there. If you want a twangier sound, actually, we, we can use the uh, Tilly style of single coil. Let's go to Tally. Let's see how it goes. Nice. nice, sounds just like a tally. <laughs> uh, if you want a more of a humbucker style, like the classic uh, Les Paul type humbucker, okay. you get much more mid-range. You can really hear the bottom end just sort of pop it out as you click it into humbucker yeah, mode. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. That's uh, really cool because I know we spoke about this a little bit yesterday um, and you said the whole idea really behind this was to get guitar players to, to go out and gig this thing. So take your laptop to a gig with an audio interface, yeah. plug it straight into the PA, and that's really useful if you're being very particular about a tone. Like maybe say you, you show up to a gig but you've only got a Strat, but all of a sudden you've got to throw like an ACDC track in the, in the set, you know. No one really plays ACDC on a single coil strap bridge pickup, but you could use this to put humbucker style tone in there. Yeah. And then obviously the people that are listening to the PA then would obviously hear a tone that sort of represents a different style of guitar. So it's really useful. I think that's a great idea for a gigging to, uh, sort of tool, but also for a studio as well. You could show up to the studio with, with one guitar and think, oh, I really need something else. And this would give you that. Uh, what's nice about it is that if you have a DI track recorded, uh, you can also apply that after the fact. So right, let's say course, you, rec yeah. you receive a track with a... Uh, or you recorded a long time ago a, a yeah. track uh, with a, a Stratocaster. Yeah. And finally, you would like to have a different tone. You can just replace it after. Wow. That, yeah, that's great. Oh, of course, yeah, because it's a VST plugin. So it makes sense because if you just DI'd and recorded that way... You could literally change it to whatever you wanted. Yeah. So it makes even double tracking quite easy because you could just DI and record it once and then just pan it left and right and just put a different pickup on. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. There's a Strat, there's a Les Paul, but really it's the same same guitar part. You could do that too, yeah. Yeah, it's a great idea. So that's the reason why it's called re-guitar. It's like reamping. most. Right, yeah, I didn't see that there. Yeah. Re-guitar, yeah, brilliant. So does it simulate different pickup positions as well? No, uh, because this requires uh, pitch tracking. Right, okay. And so it... it it usually sounds less natural. So this one is just replacing yeah. the pickups on the guitar. So it, it, it doesn't change uh, the overall tone of the guitar because of the woods that you yeah, use course, and all yeah. that stuff, but, uh, but it changes the pickup. It's like uh, replacing your pickup uh, on, the, on the same guitar. So, so would it have options, for instance, if I was on the neck pickup here, yep. is there neck pickup options as well? 
Uh, well, it, it's it's the same types of pickups, uh, right? Okay. But but you can adjust them uh, differently. Uh, there are a few adjustments parameters there. Oh, okay. So you can adjust it to your liking. But uh, yeah. if you, let's say we put a single coil in there, it's gonna sound like a single coil. Even on, on the neck. Yeah. yeah. Much more twang. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it brings a much brighter sound, sort of cuts the bottom end off and just makes it, yeah, more yeah. single coil. Uh, you can also, if you want, add some uh, hollowness to, okay. to your body, but well, yeah, and you really this, have a hollow this is completely hollow anyway, so yeah. I don't think we're going to get much more yeah, hollow. Yeah, that's but right. <laughs> <laughs> so just, you, you can change that uh, and sound like a jazz guitar if you want. Cool. Uh, like maybe put uh, this type of humbucker and add some, some thickness to it. Oh, awesome. Uh, maybe I'm going to just switch to a clean tone, right? Uh, like this one, and let's see how it goes. Go on. Different. Yeah, it does. Even though this is a hollow body guitar, it does transform the sound into something completely different. Yeah, brilliant. So I think we should change guitar and yeah. see how this works. Cool. <clears throat> so now I've got this Friedman Vintage S. So obviously this is a Strat style guitar, but we've got humbucker and two singles. So if I showed up at a gig with this guitar and I needed a Strat bridge pickup as a single coil, how would that sound? Uh, let's put it in here, remove the hollow body, and let's try it. Sounds cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. sounds like a strat. <laughs> yeah. So if I if I was just playing along there, can you just flip back and forth between the natural pickup and the single coil, sure. just so people can hear the difference yeah, of course. there? So let's start off. You can hear the cool. difference. And yeah, there's definitely. There's less bottom in there. Um, yes. Yeah. There's a big difference. As soon as you click it, you could you could hear the the bottom end just vanished in a good way, though not in sort of a. Yeah. There's, there's no low end to it all, but yeah, it definitely transformed the pickup completely. Maybe let's move to something else. Yes. Let's so, see what else I can do. Another thing, it's not built in built into Axiom, but you can load it as a VST plugin. Yeah. It's called AcuFiend, and uh, it lets you simulate feedback in the box. Okay. So even with low volume and on headphones, you can yeah. get some kind of natural feedback. Cool. Uh, let's let's use very the, useful for gigs because obviously anyone who relies on speaker feedback, this is a very useful addition. So this you said is available as an aftermarket addition. So it's, this doesn't come with the Axiom, yep. but it's something you have to add in later on. And you can load it as a VST inside right. or AX or whatever inside your the DAW. And again, here you can add feedback after the fact. So you yeah. have a guitar track, a DI guitar track. You can add feedback to it uh, later. So Pretty cool. Let's try it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
really cool. It sort of works like a sustainment pickup, doesn't it? It's the same sort of idea, but a bit more like you're getting real feedback rather than sort of process feedback. Uh, you could actually do some weird things with it. You can uh, create harmonies with it. You can change okay. the, you can change the interval. Um, so let's say maybe, do you want to play in, oops. I'm going to add a, a third to it. Cool. Can you also control the length of how long the feedback goes on for? Uh, yeah, and also the, the way, how fast it, it fades in. Okay. So let's go for like a slow fade in, but keep it going for a long time. Okay, we'll go. Let's try that. You can adjust your playing. I mean, depending on how fast yeah. uh, you change the pitch when you yeah. uh, you bend and that kind of stuff. Cool. Uh, I really like that. So, in let's let's do one more thing then to wrap it up. What what other feature would you recommend people check out for for someone who's new to the software? So we've covered the amps, the pickups, the the effects, the feedback. Is there anything else in there that's pretty cool you think is worth checking out? Well, there's another one, but I don't think we can demo it here. It's uh, the um, rehead. Uh, okay. Uh, I can show you how it, it the, the idea is uh, is to let you work with headphones. Um, so maybe if people can wear headphones from now on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we won't hear the, the right tone here in the studio, but uh, the idea is uh, when you play with headphones, it sounds like garbage in general. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and the reason is just because what's missing between the, the speaker simulation mm. and uh, your brain is the shape of your head. Because yeah, that actually yeah. changes the sound quite a bit, and so the idea of the plugin was to uh, re-simulate this this part, right, so that okay. it sounds right even on headphones. Okay, uh, that's so quite cool. I'll, please, guys, uh, try to wear the headphones and let, let's see how it sounds with and without. So let's start without. So here I've just put the speaker uh, virtually in the back, yeah. just like an amp. Uh, so it sounds darker, but you can also put it in the front if it was uh, like studio monitors. Sounds right. Yeah, well, uh, in the room it's a bit difficult to... Uh, yeah, of <laughs> to course, yeah, room, yeah we've yeah. only got one... We've, we've got a monitor speaker on the floor in front of us, so obviously we can't do the full pan in, but you can definitely hear a difference there. So I guess that would work on in-ear monitors as well for people who use that for... for yeah, like, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's the idea too. Because uh, that's one thing, I, I do a lot of gigs with in-ear monitors, and I just hate how direct the sound is. It's just as soon as you play, it's just inside your head. Yeah. And with that, you can kind of create a bit more of that real space around you. Definitely. And cool. usually it's less uh, it's less tiring for the ears to, yeah. to have that. Uh, because if you play with headphones uh, after a few minutes, like maybe 20 minutes playing, yeah. uh, you 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 get headaches just because your brain is not used to uh, yeah, having the direct sound inside the ears. I mean, the amps is not in there. Yeah. It's outside. Cool. Sounds good. So how much does this retail at for people who are looking to... To get hold of this. So Axiom itself, uh, with built-in Acufin and late replies delay and all the effects mm -hmm. and the uh, ham simulations, is one ninety nine. If you just want the uh, ham simulation, it's uh, ninety nine, and then uh, you can add the uh, you can uh, add the uh, rehead for forty nine. It's okay. usually pretty cheap. Yeah, uh, that's very cheap. That's very very affordable. Keep the price is uh, as affordable as possible. Brilliant. So yeah, and where would people go if they wanted to to get hold of it? Uh, they can go to our website uh, www.bluecatoudio.com. There we go. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Guillaume. Thanks. It's been a lot of fun exploring this software. So don't forget to go check out Blue Cat Audio on their website. This is a great piece of gear. It's you know it's very affordable. It's probably you know most of us have spent that kind of money on a pedal at some point. So yeah, there's not really an excuse to not check this thing out. It's a really great thing. It sounds good. It it feels good. Like when you play, it actually feels real because that's one of the problems a lot of software packages have is they don't feel like real amps.
but this has definitely got the, the right feel factor as well. So yeah, brilliant. So big thanks to Guillaume from Blue Cat for coming along and showing me through the software. Don't forget to check out the hashtag 42GS2 on YouTube and Instagram to check out all the cool content that's going on at 42 Gear Street this week. And thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Thanks. Cool. Nice. What time is it? Oh, perfect. <laughs>